Hello, my name is Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. In this section we're going to be looking at sheet formation for tissue production and during this unit the questions we'll be addressing are so what's so different about tissue? What's the difference between the different types of formers used for producing tissue? What is a TAD? What is a Yankee? And finally, you know, exactly how does creping work? What's so different about tissue? Well, two main factors. One is the fact that it's so light, maybe no more than 25 grams per square meter. And being so light, it's not going to have a particular amount of uh, strength. And therefore, there could be quite a lot of concerns associated with the runnability of this type of product. And the other is, the tissue manufacturers want to produce the best possible formation that they can. And one way of producing formation is to have a lot of dilution. So typical tissue consistencies could be between 10 and 100, even more, times more dilute than a typical paper making system. And because they have that much water there, then the whole focus on tissue production is actually how to remove all that excess water. Okay, well let's let's move on to the different formers now. <clears throat> Typical tissue formers are often known as gap formers. It's called a gap former because, as you see there, twin wire. We have two wires that come together and the stock actually gets squirted in between in the gap in between those two wires as they come together. So because this is just an introductory course I want to keep this very simplistic so I've not bothered putting in the wire on as I've just kept the paper on so that you get the essence of what this is all about. So one type of former is called the S former and that's because the paper run is in the shape of a letter S. Similarly the C former is called the C former because the paper run is in the shape of a letter C. Now the interesting thing about both of these is the paper is set trapped between these two wires. Now the dewatering potential here is according to Bernoulli's theorem it's dependent upon the radius of curvature and the tension applied. So imagine you've got the roll here, you've got a wire on the outside of the sheet squeezing it against that roll and by doing so dewatering. It's a twin wire so when it comes around this way what was the outside wire now becomes the inside wire, what was the inside wire now becomes the outside wire and now we're dewatering from the opposite side and again the radius of curvature and the tension on this particular wire dictates the uh, the drainage rate of the water through the wire. The sheet then comes off, the wires separate and the sheet then gets transferred onto a, a press fabric and onto the next section. With the C former we only have one roll, we still have two wires and we still need to transfer the sheet off the forming wire and onto a press fabric before we take it onto the next stage. The most uh, modern type of gap former today is known as the crescent former and this is really taking over from the other two systems. The interesting thing about the crescent former is, as it says here, it's not a twin wire former. We don't use two wires and this is where the novelty comes in. We use one wire and one felt. So on the inside of this next to this forming roll there will be a press felt. On the outside of this there will be the wire. The wire presses against the sheet, that's how we get the dewatering. It comes off here, the wire falls away and the tissue is then stuck to the press fabric and it can then go on to the next section without having to be transferred. So you know it's it's understandable why this type of technology is taking over away from the S formers and C formers. 
so this was the typical uh, setup for producing tissue at one time. We had our farming section, whatever it happens to be. We then took the sheet off, pressed it onto a Yankee drying cylinder, and a Yankee drying cylinder can be maybe three to five meters or more in diameter. It can weigh 170 to 200 tons. And then once it's dried and crepes, it goes onto the reel up. Now this drying cylinder is just like a traditional drying cylinder on all of the paper machines, except it's much, much bigger and it's the only one. Now with traditional drying cylinders, it's all the steam that goes into the cylinder that produces the heat that gives you the evaporation, that gives you the dry paper. With the Yankee system, it's not true. As well as having the heat from the Yankee radiating out into the sheet, we also have high velocity air impingement on the outside of the sheet. And for that reason, 60% of the moisture is lost because of this high velocity air and 40% is lost through the steam that we put into the cylinder. The latest development in tissue production is the TAD system and TAD stands for through air dryer and we'll see a little more about that in a moment. So the new system is we have the former whatever it happens to be it then goes through the TAD system then onto a Yankee for final drying and then reel up again. Okay, so let's have a look at these uh, two systems now. Let's have a look at the TAD and then we'll have a look at the Yankee. So the through air dryer, what's unique about this is it's a roll, but rather than having a solid polished surface, we actually have a metal mesh. And the total open area of that metal mesh could be as much as 95%. What happens now is the sheet comes in, the press roll here will press it against the surface of this wire, it will go around, we will push high velocity air through the sheet and if you can imagine those spaces then the sheet is going to get pushed into it. It's going to give it a, a very puckered three-dimensional structure and by the time it comes out at this side of the dry, of the TAD system, it's almost a moulded shape and you can't remove that puckered structure. So that's the, that's the TAD system. From the TAD we go onto the Yankee. If we don't have a TAD we go straight from the former onto the Yankee. And the Yankee again is a large cylinder as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago up to 200 tons in weight um, solid surface what we do is we bring the sheet in here press it against there typically we used to use a, a press roll and get good contact good contact means good heat transfer cheaper to dry but <clears throat> what's taking over now from a traditional press roll is actually a shoe press. So we now have the shoe pressing onto there rather than a traditional press roll. Here we normally have chemicals being sprayed onto the Yankee surface. The purpose of those chemicals are to protect the surface of the Yankee in some areas to act as an adhesion promoter so that the sheet sticks onto the surface and as it gets around here to be able to act as a bit of a, of a release agent so that we can scrape the tissue off the surface of that Yankee and it's that scraping action that we'll see in the next slide that causes this creping effect and again there's a lot of hot air and heat and moisture recirculating asso uh, associated with, uh, with the Yankee systems to uh, conserve energy but they're not really uh, suitable for this introduction. Okay now, so the final slide. How does creping actually work? Well, as you see here, this is a segment of the Yankee drying cylinder. The sheet comes down, it's stuck to the surface. 
and we press into that surface what we call a, a creping blade, blade and as it scrapes the sheet off the sheet will form these micro folds and these micro folds depend on the bevel that's here it depends on the length of the shelf and of course as time goes on this shelf gets smaller uh, because of wear and so the quality changes so they've always got to keep their eye on uh, getting you know when when to change this when several of these micro folds have been collected they tend to bend up and there you see the micro folds and then we get another set of micro folds and another set of micro folds and this is how the creping action actually takes place so because of all these folds then when we take this off and, and we reel it up, what we have to be very, very careful with is not to pull out these microfolds. And that's one advantage of the TAD system. You don't have microfolds. You have this um, moulded three-dimensional structure that won't be pulled out. Well, that's really the end of the tissue section. I hope you've enjoyed this taster session. And I look forward to seeing you on one of my face-to-face -face courses sometime in the future. Thank you very much.